Hi, I'm Monica and welcome to my reading vlog for It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. Before I get into anything, I do want to say a little disclaimer. This is my second read-through of It Ends With Us and I did want to go into this read-through with more of a critical eye and record my thoughts into this vlog. I know many people dislike Colleen Hoover and her books and because there's like questionable writing in some scenes and I completely understand that but I'm just going into rereading It Ends With Us and see if there's any big issues that jump out to me. From my point of view, I might miss some things so if I do, maybe point that out in the comments below and I'm welcome to any friendly discussion. Anyways, It Ends With Us follows Lily Bloom who on one fateful night encounters a neurosurgeon on a rooftop patio, Ryle Kincaid, and we continue from there as Lily navigates challenges from her past and her present. So before I get into the reading vlog portion, there will be spoilers in this vlog and this is your warning for that. Anyways, let's just get right to it. For my first check-in, I am at page 119, which is chapter 9, about 30% the way through. And so far on my second read-through of It Ends With Us, I'm still enjoying it. You can tell that Lily is a young and bright girl at 23 years old. And at this point in the book, she is quite happy because she has opened up her own business, her dream business being a floor shop. And she has a hot neurosurgeon going after her and pursuing her like what more can Lily want in this moment and rereading this book for the second time I am picking up on the subtle signs and like the obvious signs that Ryle might not be as stand up as he seems and I'm like looking for red flags and one of the first red flags that I am labeling as a red flag is when Ryle says there is no such thing as bad people um, I mean, sure, there is no such thing as bad people because humans are multi-layered, but when a person does a lot of bad things, I don't know, I think the ends don't justify the means, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> and there's some warning signs of Ryle not wanting to change because he mentions to Lily that he doesn't want marriage, he doesn't want kids, and he's only really determined to focus on his career as a neurosurgeon, which is fine, like there's nothing wrong with that. But for Lily, I think she does need that emotional growth in a relationship, um, given from her background and growing up in a dysfunctional household. And I think Ryle is used to getting what he wants, and now what he wants is Lily. For Lily, that's like an emotional roller coaster for her already, especially from after they reunite after like half a year and there's a lot to unpack there but I'm not going to get into too much into that yet and I also wanted to mention the diary entries talking about Lily's first love, Atlas. With Atlas, he is a homeless teenager and Lily from the goodness out of her heart. I really like that about her that she doesn't judge people from their surface level and she does help out Atlas with getting food and like taking a shower although it is still a bit questionable because she is 15 and then he is 18 but from what i can remember i think atlas was the one that was more respectable and adhering to like healthy boundaries as much as you can in this situation and there was some commentary about how in today's society people are quite selfish and then they don't really want to help others so that was an interesting point for me to pick up on and i think that's all my thoughts for now hi and welcome back so far, I have read about 60% um, of the way through this book, and I am on chapter 18. We're continuing Lily's and Ryle's relationship, and so far, I've noticed that there's no definitive talk between them of what is this relationship and where is this relationship going. They never have like a sit-down conversation, and I definitely believe that the relationship is still in the honeymoon phase. And when Ryle says, you accept me exactly as I am, I took this as an indicator of Ryle saying to Lily with the undertone of he will never change, but Lily has hope that he might. Then there was the dinner accident that happened and this part was really hard to read and Ryle pushes Lily, although it was in like a fit of rage and I guess the circumstances of her being drunk and laughing at him, but that is no excuse and no matter how you frame it, it's still him pushing her and being abusive. In that moment, I still have to give Lily some credit because she does begin to doubt but then ultimately she's in her mind still in love with him and defending him 
to herself. And that really gives you the understanding that these type of situations isn't black and white. It's really hard to look from the outside in and judge people for that. And we shouldn't be judging anyone who is in that type of situation. All we can do is give like a helping hand and be there for them. With Atlas, we're learning where he is now. He has opened a restaurant in Boston. He's quite successful. And we learned that Atlas was trying to unalive himself, but then was saved when he saw Lily and how Lily started to help him. The last parting of Lily and Atlas was quite traumatic because her father found him and like beat him up, like almost, I think, dead. And Lily never saw him, never saw Atlas again. And I still think that Atlas is still more of an understanding guy. Like, although he has a traumatic past, it doesn't translate to him beating up your partner like that's not okay and onto lily she's trying to hold on to an unexpected love emotions are very much running high for her but again they never had that serious conversation of like where are we in this relationship what are we doing going forward but i think on the relationship front while she was growing up she was around unstable relationships and parental figures so it's hard for her to accept that something might not be going correct with her and Ryle and I think that's all I have to say for now but this book continues to be quite difficult to read because it is about domestic violence and that's not something easy to read about so I'll see you in the next one all right hi everyone and welcome to my last check-in of it ends with us and I'm gonna keep this check-in really short and with the last third of this book we get more incidents of domestic violence between Ryle and Lily. But finally, Lily does call for help from Atlas and I'm really glad that she did that. And with Lily in this type of situation, it's not easy. I cried multiple times during this last third of the book, um, especially with the conversation with Lily's mom and also during the labor scene because Lily finally chose herself, but ultimately she chose her daughter. At the end, we have Lily divorcing Ryle. Thank goodness for that. Lily is mature enough to give her daughter Emerson a chance to have a relationship with her father. Of course, with Ryle and Lily being separated and not really involved with each other except for parenting their daughter. And I'm so proud of Lily at this point because she broke the pattern before it could continue on with potentially her daughter. With the last chapter, the last line was, it ends with us. I started bawling at that point. And with the epilogue, we have Lily and Atlas maybe making a comeback for each other. At the epilogue, that is where they're both ready to start again. And I thought that that's where the second book title comes from with It Starts With Us. I'm so excited for book two, but I'm not ready to cry again, but I'm quite sure I will. <laughs> And onto my concluding thoughts. This was my second read through of It Ends With Us. It still hit me right in the gut because of all the struggles that Lily experienced in this book and how she's navigating this complex situation that she finds herself in. And it is not as easy and, and simple as people may think that they should just leave. It's a lot more complex than that. Although, of course, in any given situation, like, it is best to leave, but it is not as easy as people make it seem. Easier said than done. This book shows an honest, raw, and sad truth of what many women may experience. And while reading this book, I was getting quite emotional. I was also crying at certain points because some of the different situations that we are presented with with our characters, it is not easy to read. I think Colleen Hoover did a really good job at how complex this issue can be and this is only one story or fictional story of how this type of situation can go on. It Ends With Us does highlight the emotional impacts and difficulties of domestic violence and it dives deep into the complexities of how this sort of situation can become a reality. But I am so proud of Lily, who remains strong and really resilient throughout. Of course, no one deserves to be in this type of relationship. Everyone should be in a loving and sweet and compassionate relationship with a kind and loving partner. 
In this read through, I did pick up on smaller subtle red flags that Ryle gives off from the beginning of the book. And yes, Ryle does have a traumatic past, but that does not give you any leeway or justification for harming your partner. I'm still going to be reading It Ends With Us five stars, even though with some other Colleen Hoover books, there might be some questionable passages that you may have seen online but I think with It Ends With Us it does give us a raw and realistic take on how domestic violence can develop and how this is unfortunately only one version of a abusive relationship. Overall I do give props to Colleen Hoover for handling this book the way she did. In the author's note of It Ends With Us, Colleen does mention that her parents have had a bout of domestic violence and how her mother still remains to be quite resilient to leave Colleen's father. So I think Colleen taking on this type of book, it comes from quite an intimate and personal area in her life. And I do think that she did a really good job at portraying a version of this in a fictional story. But with all that being said, I'm still really excited for it starts with us and to see where our characters are now with Lily, Atlas. I will be doing a reading vlog for It Starts With Us and if that sounds a little bit interesting to you, I will be linking that when it's uploaded in the eye and in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching if you've made it to this point and although this book is quite difficult to read through, I'm glad that I recorded my thoughts and feelings for this book. Anyways, I hope you all had a wonderful day. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.